Yes, this is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Welcome to it. It's a Feel Good Friday with us here on SABC3. Right now, it is a brand new year and the tides have changed and with it, the moon as well. Now, <laughs> the moon has a very interesting story. It has, it hangs above our heads. We see it every night. But the big question around it is, where did it come from? Now, these are among the many, many questions we look to answer on the final frontier this morning. And back again with us, Jono Weltman from the Foundation of Space Development. Jono, lovely to have you back, man. Welcome. Happy New Year. Happy Great New Year to, to you here. as well. It's going to be an interesting year for you as well. Like, oh, uh, I'm so you know, excited. It's, yeah, yeah, lots lot's to explore, happen. eh? Lots going to happen, um, yeah. We bring it a little bit, we always speak, you know, very far, you know, finding life out there. We bring it closer to home, so to speak, the moon. So what are some of the theories uh, around where the moon comes from? Because we don't really know, do we? Oh, there's some, there's some wild ones, yeah, like um, the, that we captured the moon from Venus, for example. Okay. Is uh, one of the prevailing theories. But the, the, the generally accepted theory up until now has been that there was a single... Great Collision, what we call the Great Collision Hypothesis, okay. of a planet about the size of Mars called Thea. Thea, okay. Thea, that would collided into the Earth, caused this debris field, and this debris field slowly formed into the Moon. Okay. Um, the Obviously. problem is that neither of those theories actually fit the facts. Right. Um, and, and the reason is when we go and we look at the Moon, we find that it's almost identical to the Earth or to the Earth, the way the Earth was three and a half billion years ago. Because there's no weather on the Moon, there's no climate, there's so there's nothing to wear down or change the geology of the surface. But it's almost identical to Earth. And there's no evidence of this fear that it would have collided with and, and you would have imagined that maybe half yeah. the Moon would have been made up of this other planet. Yeah. So this week, earlier this week, a paper was published with a new theory okay. that says there were multiple collisions. Multiple collisions. Yeah, what right. we call a multiple collision. That eventually formed the moon. Yeah, so yeah. they think there were about 20 collisions of smaller sized asteroids that would be harder to trace because the debris that would have been left by these asteroids would have been intermingled with the debris from Earth itself. And what happens is it creates an accretion disk. So there would have been this yeah. ring, the gra gravity, a ring yeah. around the Earth, just like you see around Saturn. Okay. But because the ring around Saturn is homogenous, it doesn't clump together because of gravity yeah. or because of tides. But the ring around Earth wouldn't have been. There would have been different size rocks, and yeah. so they would have had slowly gravitated towards each other. And then you have the tidal effect. And eventually all of this debris that was once a ring around Earth became the moon. Okay. So that much we do know. All right. Okay, but we <laughs> I'm don't, trying to envision what you are saying right we now. We don't know yeah. whether it was one collision, whether it was multiple collisions. Yeah. All we know is that the material on the moon is identical to the yeah. material on Earth. And luckily, Earth is still intact, even after multiple collisions. Earth is, <laughs> Earth is still intact. This is from the early formation yeah. of the solar system, when things were flying everywhere four and a half billion years ago. We've settled down since then. We kind of have these nice rhythmic patterns going around the sun. We're pretty yeah. safe, although we do live in a, a complex infinity, as I like to say, so yeah. nothing is guaranteed. Okay, so, so the general consensus here is, that, okay, you know, there's these there's theories, but no real answers, no concrete yeah. evidence. We're working on hypothesis, and the moon is our closest celestial neighbor, and if we're still working on hypothesis with the moon, you can imagine the amount of work that still has to be done Oy. to understand Mars, to understand the moons of Saturn and Jupiter, yeah. never mind the planets themselves. And that's not to mention before we go beyond our solar system. Exactly. And we start looking at this Proxima b and other habitable planets that we're finding. There's a lot of science to be done. There's a lot of hypotheses to be made and then <laughs> proven one way or the other. And a lot of questions to be asked. Man, it's a complex story. But one thing we do know is the moon's not made of cheese. The I'm sorry to not. spoil it out there for a lot of people, but it's not. We still actually know where it comes from. Jono, thank you so much for joining us this morning. All the best with us here. Looking forward to what you're going to bring to the show as well. Have awesome. a wonderful 2017. Thank you very much, my friend. Right now, it is news time.